Good morning. It's another Wednesday morning, and that means that we have another sermon to share. The sermon I have to share with you this morning was actually preached just a few weeks ago at the Emmanuel Baptist Church in Longview, Texas, uh, preached by Pastor Bob Gray II there, and it is called Be Ye Mindful. I believe that this is a message that uh, would be good for all of us to listen to, a truth that we would all do well to utilize in our Christian life. And uh, so I wanted to share that with you here this morning. It is right about 45 minutes long, so sit back and enjoy this message preached by Pastor Bob Gray II at the Emmanuel Baptist Church called Be Ye Mindful. Don't forget, we have Bible study tonight, and we're continuing on with our series on doctrines that identify, and we're going to be talking about baptism tonight. So looking forward to that. Come out, out join us at 7 o'clock, and here's our message for the day. Be Ye Mindful by Pastor Bob Gray the second. Mark chapter 12, if you'll take your Bibles and go there, Mark chapter 12. It's been a, uh, a uh, joy to get into the new year and to find out what does God want for us. Our theme this year is Thou Shalt Love, the Lord and Thy Neighbor. And so we're going to come again from Mark chapter 12. And look at verse number 30 and 31. This is where we find our theme. And uh, before we begin, it's good to have the Brown family with us. And uh, Brother Brown, family, thank you very much for coming all this way to be with us. And uh, just God bless you. Amen. Thank you for not bringing all the cold with you. Uh, so Mark chapter 12. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Can we say this together Ready? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And we talked about these verses in particular last week. And I want to look at the one word there, mind. Would you, would you look at that when he says, thou shalt love me, then he says, with all. And then there's this one part of us, it's our mind. Our mind is where the deepest of emotions are. Our mind is where the deepest of the thinking is, and the mind is where the deepest of the imagination is. I, I don't know if you are this way to some degree, but there are some times that you get in the elevator of your life and you push the level M for your mind. And when you travel all the way down, if you will, and you step off into your mind, you now are at the deepest point. You're, you're at the deepest point of your understanding and how limited it is. And you're at the deepest point of your feelings and how toxic they are. Then you're at the deepest level of your fears. And that scares you half to death. This is not part of the sermon, but this is why the Lord said, I believe it's in Timothy, that he's not given us the spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. When the Lord says, love me with all, then he goes through here and lists them. But there, that one word there, the mind. In my journey to get ready for this new year and in my journey to go, Lord, where are we at? What is going on? I started tearing apart all the commands and I started tearing apart these two verses right here. And this morning, I just want to come to you with, with the, the one phrase that we're going to look at here in just a moment. Be ye mindful. If we're going to love the Lord with all of our, this one part, mindful then we have to be ye mindful, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, it's just not enough for me to come to church. It's just not enough to hear the singing, to hear the testimony. God, I need something from your word. And although I know the verses that, that we've prepared and the words that I have on the typed pages here, but God, beyond that, beyond that, I need to hear from you today. And God, I ask you to help us, please. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
We're about to read a passage. If you'll go to First Chronicles, and I'll let you make your way over there. In fact, <clears throat> two passages I want you to kind of get in your Bible. Open up to First Chronicles 16, and then find Psalms 105. Would you do that? First Chronicles chapter 16 and Psalms 105. We're about ready to read some passages of Scripture that gives us a glimpse into a man who loved the Lord deeply. And when this man had the special ability to be able to stop at wherever he was at, and he was able to see God. And, and that's what we want. And here we're going to talk about David, but part of this loving expression here in 1 Chronicles chapter 16. Now, as you have these two, if you will, 1 Chronicles 16, David is bringing the Ark of the Covenant back, and now this Ark of the he loved he loved the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant represented God to the people of God. In fact, if you just want to glance at chapter 17, he was so he loved the Ark of the Covenant so much that he didn't want this Ark to dwell in a tent. He wanted to build a house. In, in his heart, he just he said, I, I've, "I've got to build the house." He didn't end up building the house. His son did. But he had this love. When you look at Chronicles, Chronicles is like a newspaper. It is not all the events on the police report, if you will. It's just a synopsis of things that happened. You're going to find out that when he says there in verse number 7, if you'll kind of look at the end of it, he said this psalm, to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. You're going to find that psalm is recorded in Psalms 105. So the prayer he's getting ready to pray in verse number 8 is recorded in Psalms 105. Now, I don't want to overload you on information. So you have 1 Chronicles 16. It talks about the psalm that we're getting ready to look at. This is recorded in Psalms 105. In fact, in Psalms 105, there's 45 verses in First, in First Chronicles that deals with this prayer. There's only 30 verses. So we can see that now David, with the Ark of the Covenant, he stops. And he looks at this Ark, and then he begins down this path. The, in verse number 15, here's where it come to, comes from the, the, uh, the title. Be ye mindful always. Of this covenant. Mindful just simply means you need to mark it. You need to remember it. You need to mention it. You need to recount it. You need to record it. So when you and I go down into the mind of who we are, it is hard to fulfill the command in Mark chapter 12 to love him with all when we go to the basement of our mind, when we go down into the deepest feelings and the deepest, the, the, the deepest reservoirs of who we are, this is why most people don't like quiet. Because when we are quiet, this is when we push the button on the elevator and we start going down. And most people that step off into the deepness of their mind, they can't handle that. So how, if this is who we are in our base, in our depravity, how can we love God with all? David comes along, and when I was reading everywhere, it talked about being mindful or the mind and things of that nature. I found it very interesting that this Hebrew word is used 231 times in the Bible, but it is the, the first four times that it's used, three out of the first four times it's used in this context, it is God remembering his covenant to man. I want you to think about that. You see, for you and I, we walk through life, I, I want to love you with all, and I just don't think I can get this done. But yet, when you step off the elevator in your mind, guess who's right there to remind you of his covenant to you? And that is God. And this is how you can love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Be mindful. Fill your mind with his promises that no matter what you have going on in the reservoirs of your thinking and your imagination and who you think you are, 
God still loves you. And this is what David was saying to his people when the Ark of the Covenant came back. He said, let's all stop. And I want you to be mindful of this. And so he begins down this path, if you will. Look at verse number 16. Look at it. He said in verse number 15, he says, Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations. David wanted these people to stop where they were at in 1042 B.C., when this was being written, it was written in 1024, 10, excuse me, 1042 BC. 1,420 years before Christ. 42 years before Christ. He is stopping and he is saying, over 800 years ago, God made a promise to Abraham. Think about this. He stopped here, and he said over 800 years ago, because look what he said. He commanded to this generation, even the covenant which he made with who? Abraham, First Chronicles 16, 16. Even the covenant which he made with Abraham of his oath unto Isaac, look at 17, and hath confirmed the same to what? Jacob for a law, and he confirmed the same to Israel for an everlasting covenant. David had that unique ability to be a man after God's own heart that he said, listen to me, wherever we go, whatever's going to transpire, whatever is next, we've got the ark it doesn't dwell in a house. I really want to put this ark in a house. And I know right, to, right now in the context of the Philistines, in the context of conflict and, and, and stuff going on, there's not yet a house built. Solomon will build that. David was a man of war. And David with this ark of the covenant that had returned back in Samuel, he stopped and said this, you listen to me, people of God, as we march with the covenant of God, our God made us a promise over 800 years ago to our family that he would be with us, that he would bless us. And I'm telling you, that promise is still true today. Can I step over here in 2023 and tell the people of God, the same God that made Abraham that promise way back there is the same God that's with us right now. And if I can give you the way, how do we love God with all? And when you get to the basement of your thinking and the basement of your understanding and the basement and you walk out and you say, I don't like this part of my life, you're going to meet a God right there that said, I made you a promise. Be mindful of this. Fill your mind with this because you can love the Lord God with all of your mind. I want you to notice what he says here. You say, Pastor, I'm not a Jew. Pastor, that, that covenant was made to Abraham. That, that was made to those people over there. Do you know, I would like to read you some scripture. And I want you to take your Bibles and go to the book of Galatians. And I want you to take rest right now that this covenant to Abraham, that he would bless that all nations of the earth would be blessed. I'm here to bring you good news. I can stand as David that told his people. I can stand as representing a Gentile. And look at Galatians 3, 6. Oh, I love this. Here we go. Galatians chapter 3, verse 6. Are you there? You want to see it? Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for what, please? Know ye therefore that they which are of what? Faith. The same are the children of who? Abraham. Come here, save, raise your hand. And then be mindful of this one thing. The God that gave it to Abraham, the God that confirmed it, the God that swore is the same God right now that comes to you and I and says, I'm God, I'm your God, and I'm going to bless you. Why? Because you're good? Oh, no. Because you have a Savior. Yeah. How, how many trusted Christ as your Savior? Yeah. Woo! Then you can love him with all your mind. Yeah. 
You don't have to live in the dark places, in the crevices of your mind. You don't have to go crazy between here. All you do is understand your God has promised you blessings. Look at it, Galatians 3, 8. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the... Y'all got to say it because that's what you are. I want you to say it out loud because that's what you are. Heathen. Come on now, open your lips and say it because you need to hear you say it. What is it? Heathen. You bunch of heathens. I almost entitled this, You Bunch of Heathens. Heathen. Justified. Declared. Justification doesn't mean you're working up to it. Justification means that the maker of this pen justified, declared. That is a pen. It's not waiting to see if it writes to become a pen. It's not waiting to see if it performs to become a pen. It's been declared pen. And the day I trusted Christ, March 27, 1979, I was declared a child of God because he justified me. Y'all listen to this. How does a person go from being a heathen to being justified? Because of Christ. Look at verse 9. No, no, verse 8 gets, gets gooder and gooder. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Ooh, so then they which be of faith are what? Blessed with faithful Abraham. Drop down to verse number 14. That the blessings of Abraham might come on the what? Gentiles through who? Jesus Christ. And that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Look at verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were promises made. He saith not and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed which is Christ. Look at verse 18. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by what? Promise. Verse 29. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. And what? Heirs. According to the what? Promise. Go back to 1 Chronicles chapter 16. I want to let you know that how does somebody love Christ with all their mind? It's when you're mindful or you fill your mind with the promises of God, not the failures of your life. Did you hear that? Do not step off the elevator in the bottom of your failures and think to yourself, this is who I am. No, that's who you were. You see, you used to be a heathen on your way to hell. Now you're a heathen on your way to heaven. And there are a lot of times we're like, well, I can't love them with my mind. My mind is just so corrupt. Then start filling your mind, not with what you used to be, but who you are right now. And you are a child of God. You have been justified. You have been declared righteous because of Jesus Christ. And people who walk around this way and they're like, I just can't do it anymore. I'm just not worthy enough. You're living in who you were, not who you are in Christ. You love God with all your mind. Let me give you two thoughts if I could. Go first Corinthians chapter, first Chronicles chapter 16. David stood up and told him, I want to tell you right now that we're in a fight, and they were. David was a man of war. David was a bloody man. Rest did not come to the kingdom until Solomon became king. But in the midst of this fight with the Philistines back there in 1 Samuel, this in the midst of all this desire to build, then I'm told I can't build the house and God's covenant and just all of this stuff going on, David steps up and he wants to tell them, are you there? Verse 15, be ye mindful always. This is the prayer found in Psalms 105. Be ye mindful always of his covenant. 
the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, even of the covenant which is made with Abraham, and of his oath unto Isaac, and hath confirmed the same covenant to Jacob for a law. And then you pull out the beginning of that verse, and hath confirmed the same to Israel for an everlasting covenant. And can I just add Ephesians 4.30 to this? And has sealed that same covenant on the inside with the Holy Spirit of God. We live in a wonderful day. Look at verse 18. Saying unto thee, look at it, unto, it's saying, unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance, when, when ye were but few, even a few, and strangers in it. You and I do not realize the land of Canaan does not represent heaven nor the Garden of Eden. The land of Canaan still had giants. You still had to fight through the land of Canaan. But David was telling them, y'all need to be mindful of this, that you may be living in the land of Canaan, but God gave you the land of Canaan, and God gave you the inheritance. And the world you're going to live in, you're going to be a few, and you'll be strangers in it. I want to spiritually let you know that you have been living in the land of Canaan because with Christ comes an inheritance. Yeah. Amen. Good. Do you know how the average person lives? They live in their mind in a lost state. Oh, look how bad it is. Look how terrible it is. And we walk around with this sour look on life. God deliver us from Christians who complain their way through life. Look at your inheritance right now. Look at the family sitting next to you right now. Did you see the car you drove in today? Do you know the house you're going to go back and live in? Have you seen the health you're going to eat this afternoon? God has been good to you. And the same God that was there with David and said, you tell those people to be mindful of the covenant that God made with Abraham. I'm not charismatic. I'm far from being charismatic. But I believe we are living in the blessings of God and we don't even realize it. You know what a famine is to us? We can't go to McDonald's. Do you know what hard times is to our kids? I got to wear the same basketball shoes this season that I wore last season. Can I get a testimony right about now? Do, do you know what's a bad day for us? Is when all of a sudden we have too much stuff and not enough house. You know what a bad day is? Is one of our 18 cars breaks down. You know what a bad day is? Is when you wore that outfit six weeks ago and I cannot repeat it. I can't get my nails done. Can't get my hair done. It's just a terrible day. Can't go out of the house. We live in the lap of luxury, and I'm going to tell you why. Because we are living under the blessings of Abraham, and because of Christ, and all nations shall be blessed. And if you right now got more than one pair of shoes, you're blessed. If you right now got one more, uh, well, I almost said one more shade of color, ladies. You're blessed. Amen. You're blessed. The love for the Lord is going to grow when you get off the elevator on the floor of your mind and start knowing God has blessed you and then get your mind back up to his covenant. Get that mind back up to here and live with the mind of Christ. We're going to be okay. If we look at stuff, just we don't look at how God looks at it. Uh, you know, it's just going to be a bad day. Are you saved? Then it's not going to be a bad day. Well, it took him 15 tries to get the Speaker of the House. What is this government, com co government coming to? It's okay, because our God's never left his throne. We're going to be okay. Did y'all hear that? We're going to be okay. But the reason we're not loving God with all of our mind and our minds are preoccupied with destruction and our mind is preoccupied with problems and our mind is preoccupied is because we don't look at our mind through the covenant of God. God has blessed us. Amen. 
I used to complain to my mama. Mama, I don't like my shoes. I said, well, praise God, you got feet to put them on. Y'all, listen. Love them with all your mind. But you're going to have to stop looking at the world around you and what you can't do. And look back at the promise God made you. You'll have the land of Canaan. Listen to this. I'm living in the land of Canaan. And no matter how big the giants are, I got a God who's bigger. And no matter what cities they are, God's going to bring them down. And no matter what AIs we face, we'll correct it and go back and whoop the snot out of them because we're living under the blessings. And when somebody looks at you and they start complaining, you go, take that finger and reach up and put it on their lips. And then reach up and grab their lips. Repeat after me. I'm saved. Don't, don't, don't let people use their mind and don't let people pollute your mind. Listen to what David said. So I want y'all to look back 800 years before we arrived here. Our God made us a promise. He gave us. He gave us this land. This is our inheritance. The second thing I want to tell you is not only did he give us the land of Canaan, I'm living in the land of Canaan. If you took all the blessings of God and started living there with your mind, you'd be okay. But look at the second thing. I think I, I start shouting on this one. First Chronicles 16. How can I love him with all my mind? It's because I've been blessed. But look at this. And when they went from, talking about his family now, and when they went from nation to nation and from one kingdom to another people, he suffered or allowed, he suffered no man to what, please? Do them wrong. He reproved kings for their saying, touch not mine anointed and do my what? Prophets no harm. Can I tell you that if you would fill your mind with this, I have been protected by God to this point. No, oh, you don't know what's happened to me in life. <laughs> you have been protected by God to this point. You don't realize how spoiled we are from the protection of God. For everything that you think is bad that is happening to you, there are a thousand bad things that did not happen to you because you're a child of God. And do you know what we look at? Well, that didn't go right. That didn't go right. It's like somebody walking up to you and saying, I know everything about you. You do. Yep. And they start telling all the bad about you. You just start laughing. Praise God they didn't get the other half. <laughs> There's a protection. And you know, to the people of God who simply follow God, there is a blessing. And I think you and I don't think that way. We think it's all downhill. No. Fill your mind with the covenant of God. God has promised he would take care of you. God has promised he would honor your obedience. God has promised you things. Don't live back there. Live with the promises. And that's why you have to read your Bible. And that's why you get up and read this book and get into the mind of God. Because when you get into the mind of God, you know what you're coming up? You're coming up with a mind that says, hey, God, it's going to be okay. Lord, I'm not living down there. I'm living up here. Go to Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 8. I said, uh-oh. Yep, uh-oh's right. Go to Malachi chapter 3 and verse number 8. I think we got this one all wrong. Why don't you look at Malachi chapter 3 and verse 8? Will a man rob God? Ye have not robbed me, but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. 
Then he says in verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the what? Windows of heaven and pour out a what? Blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it and I will rebuke the what? Where does this rebuking come? Before you honor the Lord or after you've honored the Lord? It comes after. There are a lot of people who think, oh no, oh no. You know what the curse is? No blessing. When you and I walk in the blessings of God, this is the protection. God's blessings surround us to protect us, and it keeps away the devourers. And most people think, well, you know, life's been bad to me. No, it hadn't. God's been good to you. But when we start loving the Lord with all of our heart, we want to honor the Lord in everything we do. The tithe and offering came before the law, not after the law. Tithes were back there in Abraham. Law came to Moses. You know what God's saying? All the blessings that you want, you honor me, I bless you. But we don't live there because in our mind, we live down here in the basement, in the cobwebs. And in our mind, we think God's against us. In our mind, we think God hates us. And in our mind, I can't go back to church because God's going to strike me dead. Everybody's going to judge me. Don't live there. Live in the mind of God's covenant to you. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come. He doesn't want to see anybody go down. He wants to see the blessings come your way. And when I wake up every day, I've got to transform my mind and say this, God loves me, God's for me, God wants me to succeed, God wants to bless me, God loves me, God's for me, God wants me to succeed, God's going to bless me. He made a promise. I trusted Jesus as my Savior. The blessings of Abraham are my blessings, and I can do this. And let me tell you something. You get your mind prepared to step out on the day with this thought. God loves me. God's for me. God wants me to succeed. God's going to bless me. I can do this. God's for me. I'm his child. I'm an heir. I'm a joint heir. I'm the richest person ever walked this planet. Everything's going to be okay. And start loving God with all of your mind. David was a master. David was a master at stopping in the middle of the oddest moments in his life in writing a psalm because he knew we're going to be okay. God will take care of us. Think about it. David's rebelled against by his son Absalom. We'll be okay. God will take care of us. David is being chased by Saul. It's okay, God will take care of us. And I just want to come to you this morning and tell you, be ye mindful. Fill your mind with God's covenant to you. Fill your mind with God loves you. We, we live in a day and time to where people don't want to come to church anymore. And people, pe- pe- people don't want God anymore. You want to know why? Because they go, oh, God hates me. God's mad at me. Are you serious? God sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross? He loves us. And the only way we can even think this way is because of Jesus Christ. How many are saved? Raise your hand. Then on the inside of you is God. And if you and I would just be mindful, fill your mind, not with the old man. Fill your mind with the promises of God. And when something goes wrong in life, you just simply say, my God is big enough to take care of this. Thank you for taking the time to view our services. I trust that the sermon, the message, the truth was a blessing to you. My number's at the bottom of the screen. If I can do anything for you or Emmanuel Baptist could be a blessing to you.